What's up guys, Emmerich is back in the game, so welcome to a new episode of the Testament of Sherlock Holmes. Well, like I said, I played this game only for 30 minutes when I bought it two years ago, so from this moment on I don't know what will happen. I knew it to the point where he uh, fished the necklace out of the aquarium and our dear Watson just said we have to read this article. Read the paper, Holmes. Yeah, 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 I'm going to read the paper. September 1898, Globe Explorer newspaper. Sherlock Holmes at the home of the Marquess of Conningham. The investigation is a fiasco. Yesterday, the this, this celebrated detective Sherlock Holmes was invited to the manor of the Marquess of Conningham to supply his conclusions, following his investigation into the disappearance of the priceless Samoan necklace. It should be recalled that the lady called in the detective after the police appeared flummoxed in the face of the astonishing circumstances surrounding the theft. Indeed, the valuable piece of jewelry disappeared while the door to the room in which it was displayed was locked. The alarm was raised by the servants alerted by the room's service bell ringing out during the night. When the Marquis, the only person in possession of the key, opened the door, everyone rushed in to extinguish a fire that had started, before it was noticed that the necklace had mysteriously vanished. The most astonishing factor is that no thief was found within the room and all the exits were closed. As usual, Mr. Holmes resolved the case in a in the twinkling of an eye, and the jewel was recovered. I will not waste my time on the various explanations as to the disappearance because I would prefer to draw your attention, dear readers, to the last surprising developments in the case. Following the departure of Sherlock Holmes who placed the necklace in the safe himself. The Marquis noticed that the jewel was nothing but a poor copy of the original. Let it not be forgotten that the Samoa necklace, although plain and without ornaments, is unique because of the rarity of its pearls. Pearls which are found only in a small part of the lagoon of the archipelago of the same name, and to which scientists attribute the exceptional quality to the strong density of crystal of argonite that they are made of. The priceless necklace brought here, holy shit, how long is this? Uh, brought here at the beginning of the century by Lord Fenton Arwick, the Marquess' grandfather and an eminent explorer should have been part of her daughter's dowry for her marriage to the Duke of Newcastle. So I am going to place a simple question. Should we not, in all open-mindedness, ask ourselves if the necklace was not simply and deliberately exchanged for a fake by Mr. Holmes himself? Are you fucking serious? I am aware, dear readers, that the brutality of this question without any preconceptions may certainly shock some of you. Indeed. But the facts are there, and our thoughts and judgment should not be confused with the regard which we all share for the famous detective. It is not the first time that the Globe Explorer has expressed its reservations as to Sherlock Holmes' methods. Do not forget our counter-investigation into the escape of Arsène Lupin, the Frenchman who took malign pleasure in tarnishing the image of our royal family and who, by lucky change, managed to elude capture by Mr. Holmes. Holy shit. At the time we did not hesitate to consider a tacit complicity on the part of the latter. For those who are familiar with Mr. Holmes, it is quite apparent that his character traits show more of the opportunist and brilliant usurper than that of altruistic defender of the law. I would draw the attention to our readers to the suggestion that the description of this gentleman provided by his friend Dr. John Watson through his stories is a long way from the truth. Are you serious? Indeed, his behavior is derisive, contemptuous, haughty and offensive towards the police, and in particular towards Inspector Baines, replacing Inspector Lestrade who is currently conval convalescent, and an habitual abuser of narcotics such as heroin and cocaine. This is why, dear readers, it is important to disregard Sherlock Holmes good reputation in order to form an objective opinion, and to ask the per pertinent questions. Was the necklace that Holmes found already a fake? If that was the case, why did he not mention it and why should he insist on placing it back within the safe himself? 
Has the detective some unsavory interest in this affair, or is it a simple case of deceit in order to steal the extraordinary Samuel necklace? It is up to you, dear readers, to form your own opinions, but you can count upon your humble servant to continue revealing to the public the doubtful methods and motivations of one who in the future I shall not hesitate to call Sherlock Holmes the usurper. To be continued. The ancestry of Prince Woodwell recognized. Gut, das ignorieren wir jetzt einfach mal. Vielleicht brauchen wir es noch, aber erstmal egal. Der French culinary expert and bagpipe player might be our next king. That's not so shocking, my dear fellow. You know exactly to which article I'm referring, Holmes. How can Farley dare to tarnish your reputation like that? You know, Watson, that wherever glory walks, jealousy is bound to follow. As for the forgery of the necklace, I suspect that we shall soon be enlightened in this regard. Come in, Inspector Baines, the door's open. Ah, Mr. Holmes, how did you know I was here? You are one of our rare visitors who avoids the second to last step of the stairs, which creaks dreadfully. And if I add the clinking of the handcuffs at your belt, to what do we owe the pleasure of your visit, Inspector? Have you read that, Rag? Inspector, can you explain this slander? Has the necklace of the Samoas really been replaced by a fake? I don't know how the reporter got hold of the information, but it's true. About the necklace, of course. I wouldn't permit myself to question the integrity and honesty of Mr. Holmes. The necklace is a forgery? Impossible! I saw the Marquis authenticated before my very eyes, before Holmes returned it to its place. Mr. Holmes, the Marquis believes Osmond Farley's theory. I shouldn't be surprised if the reporter isn't behind all this slander about you. He's a freelancer, well known for his explosive and subjective articles. In any case, the Marquis assures us that you were the last person to have the necklace in your hands. Let's return to the Marquis's house, Holmes. I'm sure that we'll have no trouble in taking apart this theory. It is unnecessary. Such allegations collapse on their own, like one of Mrs. Hudson's souffles. Let us leave the police to solve this problem and turn our attention to the matters in hand. Perhaps you are right, Holmes. Of course I'm always right. I'm Sherlock Holmes. What do you think? Inspector, I assume that you have the fake necklace with you. It's why you're here. Your superiors would like me to examine it. Indeed. They would like you to confirm or deny putting this fake in the box. Can't that wait? I must go to the house of Lord Peregrine Maitland, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. And the Marchioness? She is beside herself. Without the necklace, her marriage is compromised. It is the principal item of the young woman's dowry. What a lovely marriage. What a lovely marriage. Holmes, Examine. forgive me for insisting, but don't you want to examine the fake jewellery? Watson, I have an appointment, and it's out of the question that I arrive late. It will only take you a couple of minutes. You really must quell the suspicions put forward in this appalling article. If you will allow me, Inspector, be my guest. Very well. Very well. What do you think, Holmes? What do you think? What do you think, Holmes? What? I thought I have to examine this... necklace. What do we have in here? Oh, our trench coat. Nice. Put it on. Put it on. What is this? I pressed E and then, okay, our journal appears. I know that now. Come, go a little faster. Hey, he plays violin. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, I don't want it. Did not want to get some clues. Just wanted to get out of here. What was that? Bling! Why? 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 What do you think? I cannot leave now. What? Oh, there it is. God damn it. What do you think? Yeah, come on. Find out if the necklace is authentic or not. What is this? This pearl is a different color. 
Oh. Come on. Press the right mouse button. These three pearls are of poor quality. Okay. Anything else? This pearl is too small. It is not in its place here. Too many defects. This necklace is a fake. This is nothing but a vulgar copy, and at a glance it would appear that the forger has intended for it to be seen as such. How could we have been fooled by such a blatant imitation? I don't understand. Yes, how is it possible? Holmes, do you have a theory about this? I have absolutely no idea. You insisted that I examine the necklace, and I have done so. Now it is important that I keep my appointment. I'm sure, Inspector, that you will throw some light on this affair. Holmes. You may accompany me, Watson, if you care to do so. Goodbye, gentlemen. I'll keep you informed as to my inquiries. Goodbye, Inspector. You mentioned a bishop, didn't you? Are we going to his home? Yes, the Bishop of Knightsbridge. I put his address on our map of London on my desk. Would you get it for me, please? All right, Holmes. You control Dr. Watson. Oh, cool. God damn it, Holmes. Have you found my map of London? Yeah, I'm on my fucking way. Run, Holmes. Uh, no, Watson. Where is it? Is he putting makeup in the morning? Really? I mean, really? And this is how my dear friend and colleague treats his client's letters. <laughs> Female anatomy. Hmm. I should put this book somewhere else. <laughs> Hospitals and dispensaries in London. Important General information. Practitioner. That won't be of any use to me. <laughs> Why not? Here is where I write my stories about Holmes's cases. And I've got work to do. Indeed, but where's the freaking map? I thought it should be here. What? There it is, literally just two steps away. Why didn't he get it himself? I have found your map. Great. The police? Already? How did you know? May we see the Bishop of Knightsbridge? Yes. Yes, of course. But come in. What has happened, Reverend? What? I... I don't know. It was last night, I think. I only just arrived, and I have made this macabre discovery. My God, how horrible. I haven't called anyone. How did you know that? Holmes, look! The bishop, appallingly mutilated. How dreadful. Mutilated and killed. He was such a good man. How could anyone be so brutal? Look at him. He is barely recognizable now. How could any of God's children be responsible for that? They were evidently unworthy children, Reverend. Now do please try to calm yourself and focus, because we will need your assistance. Do you have any idea as to the motive behind this? I haven't had time to do an inventory, but nothing appears to have been stolen. And anyway, His Excellency didn't own anything of great value. I don't know what else I can tell you. Note this down, please, Doctor. Doctor? But you aren't the police? No, Reverend. I am Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. We are here at the request of the Bishop. In that case, I must ask you to leave, and not to touch anything. I must get in touch with the authorities without further delay. Uh, Reverend, when the inspectors of Scotland Yard find themselves at a dead end, which they quite often do, I assure you, then they turn to me for help. If you allow us to continue our investigation, then you shall have the answers to all of your questions. Out of the question! I don't even know you! I'm going to call the police, whether you like it or not. It would be better for everyone, Reverend, if you kept your temper. Watson, are you taking notes? This affair promises to be a complex one, therefore we must not overlook the slightest detail. 
Yes, Holmes, I am keeping a meticulous set of notes. I have created a very clever deduction board. One thing we can be sure of at the moment is that this crime was not for gain. The Reverend has informed us that nothing valuable was stolen, and indeed it would seem that the Bishop had nothing of any worth to take. Very good, Watson. Do continue. I can't get over the fact that he just said he doesn't know us. We are Sherlock Holmes. Everyone knows Sherlock Holmes. So, investigation into the Bishop of Knightsbridge's murder wealth. The Bishop didn't own anything of value, not even in his safe. That's it? Are you sure? Okay, oh! You control Sherlock Holmes. This stove is filled to overflowing. Okay. So the corpse we will check at the end. What do we have here? A surgical scalpel covered in blood. Why would someone leave this here after torturing someone with it? I mean, seriously. Watch where you're putting your feet, Watson. Have you noticed these prints upon the ground? Well, yes, those muddy marks. See here, Watson, footprints can often provide more vital information than the very best of informants. Yes, if you know how to make them talk, that is. It's child's play, Watson. We will begin by excluding the contaminating prints, which are yours and mine from where we came in, and those of our dear Reverend, who was so impatient to call the police. Okay. How many criminals were there? What do the footprints reveal? Oh, cool. Some kind of, of mini game. Well-worn shoes with an odd pattern on the soles. A fragment of stone. Peculiar. Okay, so this one is Hot the same as this. boots like those worn by laborers. This print came from an expensive pair of shoes and it seems recent. It is not a laborer's shoe. Okay. So... Uh, wait. Size nine. Size nine and a half. Okay. Size nine and a half. Okay, so those two footprints belong together. Size nine. Size. Those two belong together. Size. And for this one and this one, we only have one. Size. So, question one: How many criminals were there? Oh, criminals. Actually, I don't know. We have what? I need something. Yeah. What do the footprints reveal? One man joined those who were already in the room. One man left the room wearing different shoes. One man was carried so as not to leave footprints. All men left the room jumping on one leg. <laughs> what? Actually, I don't know. So, but this one is different from this one, so... I don't really know what shoes were ours, so we have three persons in this room and... I think one, two, three, four, five different... five different uh, footprints. That's I think... not right. Start again. Oh, come on. Strange but true. One of the crooks was wearing a different pair of shoes when he left here. Okay. Just looks like it. So if we have five different sets of shoes. We have two criminals. That's not right. Oh come on. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. Our footprints aren't in here. Those are just from the person. Okay, now I get it. Then we have five. That's not right. Then there are four. That's not right. 
Are you serious? One, two, three, four, I would say. But if one, okay, then there are three. Perfect. We now know okay. that there were three crooks. Therefore, we have one three men who came in shoe. and left again. But one of them was wearing a different pair of shoes from the ones which he came in with. So, all we have to do is look for a workman who likes Italian shoes. Okay, so much for this, but I would say that we end this episode right here. If you liked it, hit the like button down below, leave a comment, and then I will see you again in the next episode of The Testament of Sherlock Holmes.